Molly Pope here of Molly Pope Art. I have a yellow swallowtail acrylic painting tutorial for you. If you've ever wanted to learn how to paint or draw butterflies, this is a great quick little video for you. And as always, if you have any questions at all on any part of this tutorial, just drop them in the comment section and I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thank you so much for watching. All right, let's jump right in on this yellow swallowtail butterfly tutorial. I first began by drawing my butterfly with a pencil. I love to use Bic mechanical pencils. So that is drawn um, on Canson multimedia paper using my Bic mechanical pencil. And the overall size for this butterfly uh, it's four inches tall and about five inches wide. Um, and I used five colors overall for this butterfly and only two brushes. So you can use whatever colors you have at home um, and whatever brushes that you uh, would like to use. To begin painting your butterfly, you're going to base your butterfly in uh, cadmium medium yellow acrylic paint. Uh, I'm using Liquitex. Again, whatever you have to use is perfectly fine. So you want to brush, you want to use your um, angle brush. That's what I begin painting this butterfly with. Um, and you're just going to base coat over the entire pencil drawing. It won't matter. Yellow is so sheer. You're still going to see your butterfly drawing through that yellow paint. And these butterflies have beautiful black banding around um, both sets of wings so I did draw those detail um, that black banding in first and now I'm just using a black with that angle brush and base coating the entire black sections that are on this butterfly Now, when you're first starting detail painting um, and really painting any subject, you want to use uh, your acrylic paints in sort of a wash um, technique. And all that means is that your paint flows easily off of your paintbrush. Um, so basically, you're using about um, you're using a nice damp brush, and you're using plenty of water um, on your brush so that it flows very easily and smoothly off of your brush. And so it's almost, your paint will almost be the consistency of ink. Um, and so that's why it's, it's called a wash. And you're basically just loading the paint in every area and just base coating the entire subject first using that wash um, um, consistency of paint. So base coat everything with the yellow, base coat every, every um, black area uh, with the black. And you can see underneath on the bottom wings, um, I'm using that angle brush to kind of paint just sort of slightly little angled um, lines, sort of solid, almost like just sort of feathering in some texture into that bottom area of those wings.
Now I've got all of the areas on the butterfly base coated and the yellow swallowtail has these beautiful black markings on their wings um, and I'm using my angle brush just to kind of place those areas, those little um, long sort of triangular shaped black markings on the wings. Um, I'm actually just going over my pencil marks. So basically what you're doing, um, you can see I'm using my angle brush in two different ways. Uh, I used it to base coat the entire butterfly and then I'll use the chisel point to sort of draw in and color in over those pencil lines on the painting. And basically that's what you're doing when you are painting in a subject. Um, you are basically just coloring with your paint. So a lot of people are intimidated in using a paintbrush, um, but you may not be so scared to use a pencil. So if you just think in um, terms of when you're painting, think of just basically using your paintbrush to draw in your design. It will take a lot of the fear um, away from you if you just think of it in terms of as you're painting that you're basically just coloring and or drawing with your paintbrush. It makes it so much easier and less intimidating to think in terms uh, in that regards of painting. Just pretend that you're basically drawing or coloring. Um, it's the same concept. So you can see I'm using that chisel point of the brush to kind of go over my pencil lines that were previously drawn and um, I'm using it to paint even the the wing veins on the butterfly wings um, and there I'm using the flat side of the brush to kind of fill in so you can use that same brush in different ways you can use the flat side of it of the paintbrush to kind of fill in all of your areas and then you can flip it over and use the chisel edge to do detail painting um, and again, this whole design was painted just using two brushes. I used the angle brush and you want to start out with a larger brush first. As you are painting your subject, you would never want to start with a teeny tiny little paintbrush when you're beginning work. Um, it would take you forever. So always think in terms of using a larger paintbrush when you're starting in your base coating and um, adding those first, wa first wash layers. And then as you get into more and more detail in your painting, then you can kind of switch to a smaller paintbrush. If using this angle brush seems intimidating to you to paint in all of the veins, you can definitely switch to the, a, a smaller detail brush. Um, whatever works for you so that you have control, you feel comfortable what you're doing, that's really the goal. Now I've switched to the small little detail brush. Um, it's a zero liner brush, and that is to paint the butterfly's um, head and body. There are three different sections to a butterfly. There's um, the, as far as the body is concerned, there's the abdomen, um, the head, and, and the thorax. So these yellow tail swallow, um, yellow tail butterflies are painted um, the bodies are painted in yellow and black. You can see the main body section is yellow and then I'll go over that body section with some black to paint his eyes um, and different sort of details over the body. Now I'm actually using more of a yellow wash over those black areas just to kind of blend and soften them out a little bit. And now I'm adding that black color over the body of the butterfly and Again, using that very small little zero size detail brush. Now I'm painting his eyes with the black and then adding a little bit of highlights um, with the titanium white also. His antenna is done also with the black with that really light, um, thin wash of paint so that it kind of flows off of your paintbrush smoothly. So you're almost painting with an ink. That's kind of the feel 
um, of that paint. It's painting with an ink consistency. Now I made a little blurb right by his head and I kind of was overzealous with my black and it got a little bit too wide. So if that happens, you can definitely use just your straight titanium white with a clean paintbrush and clean up any little um, mistakes on your paper with just that white uh, paint to hide those little mistakes. Now I added a little bit of a sort of a washy color with the yellow and burnt umber. So it's a very, very light um, brown shade, just to kind of shade over the body a little bit um, and just kind of break up and make it seem like that flat part of your painting has a little bit of dimension. The spots on the butterfly are painted with a titanium white mixed with a yellow. You want that titanium white mixed with the yellow because titanium white is an opaque color. The yellow, any sort of yellow that you're using is going to be more sheer. So it would not cover the black color. Um, and that's why you'll want to mix some titanium white with your yellow so that you have some opacity to that color and adding that um, mix over the butterfly, the black areas with the little spots that they have. So they're sort of equally spaced in between all of the veins. They're sort of like a half moon shape and if you look where the veins are up above that'll kind of help you as far as placement goes for your veining um, and around the little tips of the swallowtail there's a little bit of a yellow striping also on the inside portion of that little the tail The next little mix that you're going to mix up is um, you're going to mix a Prussian blue mixed with a little bit of titanium white so that again it will kind of show over the black sections of the butterfly and those get spaced um, in between the where the black and the yellow is and um, you can see them sort of on next to the um, yellow sections on the butterfly wings and if you don't have Prussian blue if you have any shade of blue it will work um, just add a little bit of titanium white to that blue the next mix is a little bit of burnt umber mixed with white just to kind of highlight those black areas on the black sections of the wings and you can see there's just a little the, the thing that makes this butterfly so beautiful is all the little bits of detail that you're going to add in various strategic um, points on this butterfly just to make it look more realistic. Um, and this is really kind of, you know, if you look at uh, macro photography for these butterflies, you can see all the beautiful little marks and shading on them. Now you're going to want to mix up a sort of a charcoal gray um, for your veins that actually continue over the black areas. Those veins run from the entire length of the, the uh, wing. So because you're painting over the black areas, you want there to be a lighter area um, just for those veins to show. So just mix up a charcoal gray color. Um, if it's not showing very up very well for you, you can just slowly add a little bit more titanium white to that mix and using your liner brush um, just to continue those veins over the black area.
And I'm just going and refining those black areas on the butterfly if they need to be a little bit deeper. Now there's tiny little hairs that are on the um, bottom wings um, and I'm using that liner brush just to go out beyond my borders of what I drew for the um, wings on the butterfly just to add fine beautiful little hairs on those wing areas. And I also use my detail brush to go along all of the borders of the butterfly and just kind of refine and clean up those areas. Um, sometimes you'll get a little bit of overbrushing uh, in certain areas that you painted. So that sort of refining areas with your fine little brush does wonders for your painting and makes the edges look really beautiful and clean and finished. And I used a little bit of charcoal gray uh, to kind of highlight that black area a little bit. And this tutorial is almost concluded. I thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. And I am more than happy to help you on your painting journey. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. Have a great rest of your day.